What's up ladies and gentlemen, FF Dev here, and in this video we're going to start making the Pong game. I'm going to try to break it up into about two videos, three if absolutely necessary. So what I did initially was I opened up our project that we had before, <clears throat> and because of the way I need this to function, I went ahead and deleted the window that we had. So we're just going to recreate a window. So if you want to follow along, go put SF for the um, SFML. And we're going to call this a video mode. And we're going to name it VM, all caps. Then we're going to give it some parameters. We're going to make it 1280 by 720. And then add your semicolon. And now we're going to create a render window. SF, render window. And as a parameter, <coughs> it's going to take in VM. You can add VM and then parentheses. And then we need a title for it. We're just going to name it. Pong clone. That's just what I'm going to name it. You can name it whatever you want. And after that, add a semicolon. And ah, I forgot one thing. I forgot the name or window. Aha, uh -huh, so we'll name it window because it's easy to come by. Easy to remember. It makes sense. Short and simple and to the point. Now we're going to add our while loop. While window dot is open. And same as usual, we're going to just add the if sf keyboard is key pressed add parentheses sf keyboard escape just add in our quit syntax then we're going to do window dot close we go ahead and run that make sure it runs so now we have our little window we hit escape and it closes all right now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a class. So if you want to right click on our source file folder here, click on add class, and we're going to name it ball. This is going to be the ball. Now, as I said before, you know how when you add the class, it never wants to act right, it never puts it in the folder. So we're going to write, we're going to highlight ball.cpp and ball.h. And we're going to drag those to the source folder and hit OK. All right. Now, if you want to double click on your header file, there's going to be a few things that we need. And this is, classes are always private by default unless you specify public, but it's just good to put private for your private variables anyways, even if, you know, even if it is private, it's just good. Just good to do it that way you know. So now we're going to need to pass in a, a vector to an ah. Also, since this is a different file, under where it says pragma1, you're going to put a hashtag. We need to include our SFML graphics.hpp, or we're not going to be able to use this. It's good practice. All right, so we need a vector to F, and we're going to name this M position. And the reason I put an M and then an underscore is just good convention to name your private variables with a, a M underscore. That's just a common way of doing it. So we're going to give name it position. And then for the ball, we're going to use a rectangle shape. So SF rectangle shape. And then we're going to name it M ball. I actually call it ball M underscore ball shape. There we go. Now what I'll probably need is we need a float. We're gonna that which is gonna be the speed. So speed's a good name for it for how fast it moves. So we're gonna name this 500. Direction X is what we're gonna create another one. And I'm not following my own rules. Let me fix this. M underscore speed float M underscore direction X equals 1.0 F float M direction Y equals 1.0 F, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a little bit. Now we're just going to have to think of some functions we could use. So I'm adding public. And first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a constructor for ball. So put ball. And then we're going to, um, actually, yeah, ball. Just like that. But we're going to add in a float. Start X and float start y. That's what we're going to name that. That way we can call the constructor. 
whenever um, we're placing our ball, this is basically where we're going to tell our ball to spawn initially. All right, we're going to need a way to get our position. So float rec, get position. Now we're going to need a rectangle shape to get the, get the shape, of course. And we also need, we'll need one later for, ah, uh, not even that, we'll need a float. So we can get the velocity of it. So we're going to use that as the x velocity. Don't even know that we'll use this, but if we do, we will. If we don't, we don't. So now we're going to need a way for it to void rebound on sides. Void. This is how we're going to change it, make it bounce off the sides. Is this rebound sides function? Rebound or Actually, I don't even know if rebound is a good name for it. I'm going to name that bounce sides. Then we're void bounce top. Void bounce bottom. So I'm going to name this one. Nah. Name that miss bottom because we're not going to have it bounce back on the bottom. And then void hit the ball. All right, so that's going to be what happens when we hit the ball. We're just remember in the header file, we only declare. You can declare and initialize the variables like this, but as far as like your functions go, you're only going to want to write like the constructor for them. Saying there's a definition for them. We're going. We're definitely going to need an update function, and it's going to take. SF time and DT for delta time. All right, now that we have this, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do this exactly. All right, so the good thing about creating it as a class, instead of adding the file one by one, it already includes your header there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and com complete our constructor. Ball, ball, float, start, x, float, start, y. So what we're going to in instantly do is we're going to say m position dot x equals start x. This is how we can access those private members that we didn't um that we set private that we wouldn't be able to you know directly access in the main function. I'm gonna set this as start y, but the constructor can function them or can access them because that's coded, you know, coded here inside of this function. The function can access the private members, but when, once we go into like a main function, we're no longer gonna be able to access the private members. But this is a way to make your code a little bit safer and work better. Now we want the size of the ball. I have so much trouble hitting that ball shape. We're going to set the size. We're going to set it by. has to take a vector 2 float. SF vector 2F. So I'm going to set it by 10, 10. And if you guys are wondering as you're doing this and you enter this in and you see the SF, not actually do it, you see a vector 2, a normal vector 2. We have a 2F, which stands for it's a vector of floats. The 2I is integers. And this, I believe, is unsigned integers for the 2U. If you were wondering what that it makes sense now there's also vector threes floats and integers vertex arrays but we're not going to cover any of that in this video all right so we set the size of it and now we just need to set its position we're going to put in position ah i was wrong in ball shape dot set position to in position there we go so what this essentially does is we're given the position we want the ball to uh, be spawned. Then we're going to take the ball itself and we're going to set it to that position we want it to be spawned. 
So that's the constructor for it. Now we're going to need a get position function, I believe. Well, I like the way that looks. Too many spaces. All right. So we'll say return. What did I do wrong? I know what I did wrong here. Actually, I don't know what I did wrong here. Did something wrong. I know what I did. Aha, this is an easy mistake to make, and you may do this from time to time. So we have our thing called get position. We can't just have it return directly. So that's a float rec with the state that's coming from the ball class. So from the header, we're going to say that it's going to be this one right here, get position. It's going to be this function. So the way you do that is you put, um, let me open up the ball CPP file. All right, so we say SF float rec, rec as it was named in um, the ball file. Tells what type of function, what's getting returned, and we just name it get position. But you can't just put get position in the CPP file. You have to actually put which, what it's coming from, and it's coming from the ball. So we have to put ball, then the colon colon get position. Now, when we try to return this, we should be able to access the m ball shape dot get global bounds. And that's going to work for that. And you'll see how this is going to work in the um, pretty soon. All right, so we're gonna get the re we're gonna need the shape of it. So now we're gonna say ball get shape. And if you if y'all if you guys are wondering how I do that so fast sometimes, without having to type it all out. You just um after you start typing and you see the autocorrects kind of highlights that you hit the tab key and it'll fill it out for you. Now we may use this in the future, we may not. Get yeah, X velocity, so now I'm just gonna return. Direction.x. I don't even think that this function is gonna be necessary, but I don't know what I was thinking when I started it, but it's all right. Now this is gonna be pretty easy. The next, the next functions are pretty easy. So we're going to name void ball, and then we're going to name this, um, let's see, bounce on the s sides. We do that function, and all we do here, because the sides, you know, that's left to right, that's the x direction. So all we'll say is m direction x equals negative m direction x. So all we're saying here is whatever this is, we're going to multiply it by negative 1 is all it's saying. So if it was negative and it equals negative, it turns it back to a positive. So that way we can change it from bouncing on the screen. Whenever it hits the side, we're going to make it change its x direction each time. Whenever it gets there. So now we're going to need bounce top. Want to give me a hard time? It's trying its absolute damnedest. All right, so we'll do the same with top m direction y equals m direction y ah equals negative m direction negative m direction y. All right. And always make sure you get your semicolons added in or you're going to have a little bit of trouble, but not too much. Luckily, that's an error that can be easily found. It tells you what the error is. <laughs> now we're going to need it. Um, let's see how we're going to do this. What do we call it? Miss bottom? 
I need. I guess I gotta start typing so I can get it to autocorrect to it. Gotta hit at least one, one letter of it. All right. So what we're gonna do here? If we miss the bottom, then we're just gonna set the M position. Hey, let me think. We can do it this way to make it a little bit easier, a little more readable. We could set them both at one time by using an SF vector 2F. But this will just be a little bit easier. So X is going to be our width. So we know that our, our window is 1280 across on the width. So we're going to want it to be centered. So we're going to put 1280 divided by 2. Now we're going to want to set the, uh, the Y axis. And now I'm just the messenger. I'm going to take a second here to tell you I'm just the messenger. Don't come after the messenger. In SFML, <coughs> the X coordinates, I'll go ahead and tell you on this, the X coordinates, because I didn't explain this, it doesn't start in the center. The X, the zero on X starts at the very left of the screen. And so 1280 would be all the way to the right. And so we divided it by two, and that's what put it in the center. Now the Y coordinates, they start at the very top. So zero is the very top. And if you go all the way down, 1280, or let's see, let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1280 by 720, so 720. So zero is the very top, 720 is the very bottom. So we're gonna wanna set this to zero. So we're setting this at the very top of the screen, dead center when we miss the ball. It's going to automatically respawn at the top. So how we're going to do this. So that's just what I was wanting you guys to see. Now I think we got one more function we got to take care of. This is the important function, the update function, which is going to take a time variable. So all we do here is we're going to say in position. Let's see if I can get this working the way I want it to. Of course, I forgot to put the ball there. Now it knows it's part of that update. All right. In position dot x. And then we're going to add it. We're going to add our m direction dot x times speed I didn't name it speed because it's a private variable we named it M underscore speed capital S times DT and since it's a clock variable it's not gonna be just plain or time variable it's not gonna be as seconds yet we're going to put DT then you hit the period button as seconds and be sure to add your parentheses after and then a semicolon now this is, well I'm not going to show you bad practices with the copy and paste, I know some of you will do it, but we're going to basically do the same thing, dot y plus equals m direction y times m speed, we're going to multiply it by delta time as seconds. And then one last thing. You're going to want to do your, um, let's see, ball shape dot set position to M position. And um, some of y'all, y'all may not know what the delta time is for. Uh, the delta time is, uh, there's more videos that explain it in better detail than me, but the delta time, if you don't add this, everybody's computer runs at different frame rates and I'll multiply by the speed that speed every frame so somebody's getting 60 frames you know will move the ball move a lot faster than somebody who's getting 30 frames <laughs> so the delta time measures the time between frames and when you multiply it by that it makes it essentially the same time same exact time that's all it's doing is keeping the uh, ball and movement the same speed regardless of frame rate you can probably look online, I'm sure you can, and find more uh, detailed explanation of it, but that's the gist of it. So now that we got that, all we really got to do is 
go ahead and start coding this in. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to go to our main function and we're going to want to do this while it's open. All right. So we're going to need us a clock. That way we can do a clock restart. I'll show you that to get the delta time. So we're going to have a clock and we're just going to name it clock lowercase. Um, we're also going to need a ball and we ain't going to be able to access that until we include our ball header file. So now that we're here, we're going to type in ball and we're just going to name it my ball. You can name it whatever you want and ah, we had a um, constructor that had to be fulfilled. We have to set the position of it. So to do this, we're going to have to put in, let's say, 1280 divided by 2 and then 0. So it's going to spawn at the very start. All right. Now that we got the ball spawned, we're going to have to make it do something. So we're, first we're going to get it drawing and make sure we can get everything working. So what you're going to want to do first is down here you're going to want to clear your window. Which you see how the window is always white. We're going to clear it to a black color by default. But you can also change the color to any color you want. All right. If you see in the uh, little details here, you can do SF color and then you can do the numbers with RGB and alpha, change the transparent transparency, or you can just do, they have some default colors. I'll show you real quick. And you can put like black, green, whatever, but by default it's black. We're gonna wanna clear the window. Then we're gonna wanna draw our ball to the screen. So we're gonna draw my ball. And ah, we can't just draw the ball object yet. That's this is why we gotta do the get shape function. That way we can draw the shape. That's what the get shape function was for. We added so we could draw an image of it. Because if you see here, I'm gonna try to walk you guys through this as much as it is. Let's see what where's it at? Where's it at? Get shape returns to the ball shape. And you can see here in the header file that the um, ball shape where is it at M shape M ball shape and that's what we're returning we're getting the actual rectangle shape which can be drawn alright and now we just need to display it when it's not displayed yet it's in a buffer when it's like that when it's on draw so now that it, it lets it draw it and so it's fully drawn before it's displayed then you type in display and if everything's done correctly I usually have some errors but we'll see it should draw a, a ball to the screen Ah, and here's our ball at the very top. So now that we got our ball at the very top, we're going to make it do some stuff now. We're going to hit our escape key. And also, we can create a SF. This is a little, a little random. SF event. We're going to call it event. Actually, no, we're not even going to worry about that now. We don't even... I'm going to set up clicking the X because I can set that up, but we're going to stick to the meat and potatoes of what the video is about. All right. So now what we're going to do while the window is open, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to get our delta time. So we're going to say, let's see. We're going to need a delta time. The time variant time dt and then we're gonna uh, say dt here while the window's open equals clock dot restart so what this is gonna do is this is gonna get us our delta time every second so now we're gonna have to plug this I'm gonna put the I want to keep the update right before the draw so it'll be as accurate as possible our update function so then we're gonna go to uh, my ball dot update 
dt and then we're going to want to put I think we already got it where it takes care of itself like we could put it as seconds there if we didn't already take care of it let me look in our file to see if I've already taken care of it so I honestly don't remember yeah right here it automatically converts it to seconds all right so now, fingers crossed, we have our up, we're updating the ball there. The ball should move. Yep. All right. Now we just got to add in a few things right here. We're going to say if ball or if my ball dot get position. You're pulling with the brackets dot x or dot width. So this is going to be the very left side of the ball. If it is less than zero, then we're going to say or if my ball dot get position dot width, and then you're going to say ah not width. Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. You want to put left on the the very left side of the ball. So my ball dot get position dot left if that's less than zero, and then you're going to use the logical or or if my ball dot get position dot left plus my ball dot get position dot width. This essentially this will give you the right side of the ball. And we're gonna say is greater than twelve.